Okay, so I'll admit, from time to time I make a... I sometimes make very mediocre videos. And I feel like my critique of Common Sense by Thomas Paine was very flawed. Very, very flawed. I was nitpicking worthless points. And I wasn't really addressing the true problem that is Thomas Paine's Common Sense, which is a great writing. It's a great writing in terms of its historical value and what it's created for this nation. But other than that, when you think about it, Thomas Paine's writing and its heavy Judeo-Christian rhetoric, despite him being an atheist, or uh, was he? Maybe he was a deist? That, you, you could argue that. His views on government, basically, it's a kind of post-Garden of Eden perspective that society needs government now because it's no longer in the paradise that it used to be. It's sin leads us to actions that um, move past its moral protectionism, where sometimes what you can do will bite you in the ass. Sometimes there's things that you can do that'll harm you now, and we're no longer in that paradise. And since we're all created equal, we're all face this, and because of this we need some government to protect us in these socio-economic, socio-political situations where of sin, which is basically just anything that would ordinarily be great, but now just comes and bites you in the ass from time to time. And I like this analogy, but in actuality, this isn't how it works. Government formed because society in terms of social, political, and economic terms, rises up in terms of quality. There's more economic quality. There's less social stability. And uh, in terms, there needs to be more institutions to handle the political spectrum of it all, to mediate the social and the economic. That's sort of what the political system seems to me, and stuff like government is just something that stems from it. And now we all know I define government and state as being different things, where I see them as being different institutions and having different responsibilities. But aside from that, basically it's premise of government is this one of a lost paradise where I see it as being more of an evolutionary one which of course just shows that the times change and we are still Christian or not by nature creationists in thought as long as we're at ease God's just egalitarian premises, not bashing on egalitarians themselves. But regardless, moving on to these critiques on the monarchs, he does a great job of critiquing the monarchs, aside from this whole, the monarchy is sin, Judeo-Christian analogy, focusing more on the Jews this time. This in this um, critique against the monarchy, he basically does a good job of showing that with a monarchy, you risk having a bad monarch. You risk having one that's too young, too wicked, that a constitution is in the hands of the monarch, so if it's restricting his power and it's a convoluted monarch that he can you know, overturn it, you, he was really 
setting the precedence for six months later when we were going to do a Declaration of Independence. And then eventually after that, maybe perhaps a Constitution with a basis of balance and a republic that's, which we call a new material, even though it's not that new at the time. But regardless, this is new idea of common good, and I guess it helps his Judeo Christian rhetoric of egalitarianism and equality. However, we're stuck in this point now where, yeah, the Republican system is um, fairly decent relative to a lot of other places. But there's a military-industrial complex that's been forming since the early 20th century slash late 19th century. And it's building up to a course where now for the past 50 years, we've been dealing with the same rhetoric. Yet instead of being used for a balanced, fairly solid system of a republic... We're dealing with this bureaucracy of lobbyists and activists all working basically against us, trying to help us in our social issues, trying to help find what's best for us, whether it be you know, nutrition or affirmative action, sexual education education in general, marital protectionism, a lot of stuff, but it all bites us in the ass near the end somehow because with that same constructive rhetoric, whether you agreed with it or not, in the beginning America was fairly solid. Even with Lincoln and half of the constitutional breachings that he did, there were those moments. It was still a fairly decent, fairly strong system as opposed to now where it's become a system that just doesn't work. And now we have this military industrial complex where I feel like instead of having like, how many presidents has it been? Hmm perhaps seven or eight. I feel like we've been dealing with at least 15 of the same president. That this military industrial complex that uses the same rhetoric and turn this, I guess this, the Western world and even Christianity itself from an aristocratic point to a democratic point and this quick transition is proof that although Thomas Paine was ahead of his time and the zeitgeist would catch up 100 years in the future for all this rhetoric or even 200 years in the future it hasn't been a very smooth transition. And I feel like it's not only very unbalanced, but I feel like it has to stop at some point. And speaking of Zeitgeist, I thought that my last video on the Zeitgeist would be all I need, but looks like I'm going to have to do one more. And this one's going to be very cliche. So, just... I mean, it's only you, Peter Joseph and Jack Fresco. I did go on a little rant near the end, but it was a little bitchy. I'm going to go back to you guys, because... There's... Some things I've been ever apprehensive to say, but... While I was focusing on my series, The Zeitgeist Heist, on 
your utopian esque values and um, all the little constructs, innovations, um, critiques of you've made on certain historical points, like uh, basically the Dark Ages and all these little things you've made little errors on the nature of property they've caught up and now I'm very interested in basically cutting you guys up in terms of your views on economics because I made a couple of mistakes in the sense that I wanted to be a little too different and I even said that I like the first 20 minutes of addendum but that's not the case anymore those first 20 minutes where you diss the banks, they even went and touched some libertarians. That's not a good thing. That's a very detrimental thing. Because that means that some people actually believe that this is a zero sum game. So after a couple of videos, I will start a new series on you guys. Maybe it'll be a one shot, but that shot's definitely going to happen. In the end, this has been Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick.